What's going on my beautiful governors? Welcome to a new Rise of Kingdoms video. As you can tell from my voice, <laughs> Blue hit me too hard. I've been in bed for like last four days. That was the reason of lack of content, but oh, um, I can't even speak. But it's Friday, so I'm going to do my best to upload a video. As you guys can see, we got the legendary Hidden Lotus. It is just cavalry attack, like the stats don't matter much. But between all the epics, Hidden Lotus is the uh, rarest one because... You can only get it at the start of the game and you need quite a bit of power 1.5 million now as you can tell from the title today we will discuss jumper versus sleeper i will explain what is a sleeper account what are the benefits what are the downsides and then you will decide when you create another account in future you can decide if you want to create a jumper account or a sleeper account i've already made a jumper guide and the only reason at the last minute i changed i decided to go with the sleeper route instead of jumper route just to make this video now as you guys can see, my city hall is level 19 already, and I'm still in our starting kingdom, 3038. And our project, let me show you guys real quick. Let's take a look at Dolphin. They have already jumped to our final kingdom, which is 3052. I couldn't jump because, as I've explained on this video, you have to be maximum city hall level 7. The highest building level on your city should be level 7. And as you can see, like, I'm way past level 7 city hall and other buildings because i turned this account from a jumper into a sleeper now the sleeper account is basically you start your account in a kingdom but it is a little bit too hard or tricky to do it with a group because your group either you need to know those people or they have to believe 100 percent that you will jump with them because if they don't believe that you won't be allowed in that alliance now obviously my group trust me they know that i'm going to stick to the project and i will go to their final kingdom in a few days but i will get to how later in the video so what i did with this account is that i started my account with my project in 3038 and i played it as a jumper and as i said in the last minute i decided to turn this into a sleeper basically what we do with a sleeper account by the way shout out to logic bank the master of creating new accounts is that you create your account with your project or if you're solo doesn't matter but you don't stop at level 7 city hall or other buildings like you do with your with your jumper account you push as much as you can and how you jump to the final kingdom of the project, you are going to migrate to that kingdom like a regular migration because we are way above level 7 city hall so we don't have beginners immigration, we lose it at level 8 city hall. So yeah, we cannot jump but we can migrate. For migration, you need one passport page as long as you are under 10 million. If you're a spender, low, mid, high, doesn't matter, what you can do is you can go to New World Bundle and just get one passport for five bucks but if not there is also another option you can farm alliance credits 600 credits will get you a passport page in your alliance shop so if you're a spender you can just spend five bucks to get that passport if not you can farm 600k credits to get that from the alliance shop and with that passport what you do is quite simple once the final kingdom your destination kingdom is 10 days old in this case 3052 for me when this kingdom is 10 days old, I will be able to migrate to that kingdom with my one passport. If we click on kingdom 52, it is not possible to migrate. But when this kingdom, as I said, is 10 days old, I will be able to migrate to that kingdom, our final kingdom, destination kingdom, to my jumper project with no problems. But why am I doing that? What is the benefit of sleeper account? Well, the benefits are quite simple and straightforward. If you are a super active free to play or a low spender, there is a high chance that you will get all the rewards from this event. You can get the Hidden Lotus, bunch of speed ups and gems. Another benefit is it is not boring like waiting for your jump day because you get all your buildings to 7 and technology to max just a few days, right? 3 to 4 days. And after that, for like 4 or 5 days, you just wait, you just farm, you kill barbarians, you try to farm XP for your commanders. But you cannot do any building upgrades, you cannot do any researches, you cannot do anything. You cannot even train higher than tier 1 because tier 2s and tier 3s won't be unlocked for you. But this way, you just play the game as it is. The only downside is you will jump to that kingdom, your destination kingdom, 10 days later. But there are more benefits of a sleeper account. Another one is you will have a lot more time because you're going to spend like 20 days in this kingdom, right? You create your account, you wait to 9 to 10 days. And then at the 10th or 9th day, your, your project jumps to Final Kingdom. But you will have to stay here 10 more days so that your Final Kingdom is available for immigration. So we are going to spend 20 days in that kingdom. And in that 20 days, it is a lot easier to investigate all those mid and high tier caves. You're going to spend a lot more time in this kingdom. And you will be able to 
also visit more villages for more rewards but most importantly if you can find yourself a place in the one of the top kingdoms in your current kingdom your pre-jump kingdom you will get first occupation rewards from altars and from passes you can get altar rewards and pass rewards in both kingdoms the kingdom that you are already in and the kingdom that you're project in right now that you're going to migrate in a few days so this way you can simply double the value and double the rewards that you are going to get from pass occupations and altar occupations another benefit of a sleeper account is since you are able to upgrade higher tier units you will have much easier time in expedition because as a jumper i don't think you can pass level 20 right this level 20 i think it was hannibal barca yep it is hannibal barca and it is pretty hard to get him with tier 1s only, but if you're a sleeper account rather than a jumper account, you will be able to, as I said, train tier 2s, tier 3s, and uh, I got to, let's see, yeah, I got to level 36, which gave me a bunch of FFLED sculptures. Right now, she is at 1-1, one, one, but I already have 9 extra sculptures. But I must say that sleeper accounts are not for everyone. As I said at the start of the video, you either want to do it solo. If you are doing it with a group, your group, your jumper project has to trust on you. You got to be confident that you are going to get a spot in one of the top alliances in your current kingdom because you will be alone. Your project will jump to your destination kingdom 10 days earlier than you. They're going to jump you are going to migrate 10 days later. And last but not least, you either want to be, if you're a free-to-play, you want to be super active, like chaining barbarians all day, low hearts and all that, because if you're going to be a sleeper, you better get that 1.5 million rewards, get that city skin, get those gems and etc. If you're a spender, you will have a lot easier time, but obviously not everyone spends money in Rise of Kingdoms. If you think sleeper account is a little bit risky for you and you want to go with the classic jumper route, then you can watch this video where I explain the perfect start for a jumper account. I see you guys on that one. Bye.